Hey, good morning, everybody. John here at Havoc Maker Studio. That was a little loud, I imagine, but <laughs> thanks for sticking around to watch the video. Uh, so here we are at Havoc Maker Studio and FMP Wargamers, and today we're going to cover the newest release, at least character card-wise, with it's going to be Jean Grey from CP53, and she's also going to be showing up with Cassandra Nova, so I think in the next couple of days we will see the panel to play for Cassandra Nova. And then next week we'll see her action, her her character card. We're going to go over a couple other mo um, models that they've talked about, and do some little speculating on maybe a little theory crafting on what we're going to see. But let's cover Jean Grey first as being one of the most powerful psychics on the planet, and now she's made her way into the game. Uh, let's take a look at her powers. So the only difference between the healthy side, which is the uh, the side with the blue background and the injured or day side, the red background, is she gets one more point of health on her injured side. That's the only difference. So that's all we're going to cover. So they just call her Jean Grey, not Marvel Girl, not uh, Marvel Woman or anything like that. They just It's just Jean Grey. That's it. That's her code name. So starting at top to bottom, left to right. She's got six health, seven on her other side, so total 13. Medium movement. It's good. Uh, size 2, normal. Uh, threat 5, which is really high. I think uh, the Hulk is the only one. It's a, Hulk and Thanos, I believe, are 6s. Don't quote me on that. I'll have to double check. But uh, she's definitely high up there on points, and we're going to be looking at her powers to see why. Her defenses are really good. Um, an okay physical defense, 3. That's, that's about the average. She's got four on energy resistance, which is really good, and then a five on mystical. Mystical uh, kind of encompasses mental attacks and magic. It's like I said before, there is um, instead of coming up with all these different types of defenses and attack things, they put everything under an umbrella. So mystic attacks also means telepathic, psychic, that sort of thing. So her first attack is a mystic attack, speaking of, and it's psionic bolt. It's range four, which is very impressive. Very impressive. It's got five damage dice, which is very healthy, very, very healthy, and zero power cost. This That's normal. After this attack is resolved, this character gains power equal to the damage dealt. That's pretty much standard now for most abilities. Not everybody has that, but I would say the vast majority, I would say around 75, 80% of the current character roster has that ability. Also, if you roll the wild symbol, you get sap power. So before damage is dealt, the target character loses one power for each. And it looks like it's the wild symbol. It might be the critical success, but I think it's the wild symbol. It's kind of hard to see on my screen here. Um, for each wild symbol in the attack roll. And this character gains that amount. So when you're rolling the dice, if you're not familiar, and you're making an attack, uh, majority of the times there's the hit symbol which I think there's two on the dice. There's the wild symbol and there's the critical success symbol. So those three are normally are what's required to hit or to, to cause damage. And you're rolling five dice, you're pretty much almost guaranteed to get a at least one of those. Um, I mean, not a guarantee, but pretty high chance. I think that puts it at a 60% chance of at least getting one. I don't know. I'll let you guys do the math. Anyways, so she can get a lot of power really quick from just doing the damage. And also for every wild symbol, she's going to get that power regardless if they cause damage or not. So she's getting power. She's going to get a lot of power. The one per turn that you get at the start of the activation, uh, the, the next round of the activation phase. And then, of course, the, the this ability right here, Sonic Bolt. So she's going to be sucking up power which is really good. Uh, her next attack is a physical attack, and it's a telekinetic force. Before damage is dealt, if the character that you're targeting is size four or less, which is pretty much everybody. I don't think there's anybody that is under or over size four right now, though there is very likely we're going to be seeing the Sentinel, and we're pretty sure, or I'm pretty sure at least, and I'm pretty much, I might have to do a giveaway if I'm wrong. If I'm wrong... Uh, Miss Mar with Miss Marvel or not? Yeah, Miss Marvel, uh, Kamala Khan getting a large size model and her little one. 
Uh, if I'm wrong about that, I'm going to give that miniature away, <laughs> that box away, if I'm wrong. So anyway, so she's going to be able to throw, around, throw everybody around. Uh, it's only short range, but on top of that, it's range three. So it's a, it's a decent range. Nine, nine, nine dice. That's awesome. That is a lot of power. And it, it's going to cost a lot of power, six. But looking at her initial ability, Psionic Bolt, within a cut, within maybe around turn, by turn two, you could theoretically be able to pop this off. Theoretically. And at nine dice, that's impressive. It also has the ability called Explosive, which you roll the wild symbol after damage is dealt. Other enemy characters within range two of the target char character suffers one damage. So that, and range two, I figured it'd be like range one, range two, and it, it did. And one damage, okay, that's that's nice. A nice little after effect. We'll, that means we'll probably be seeing more explosive in the future. So let's take a look at her other abilities. Her first superpower is Battlefield Manipulation. Manipulation. Choose an interactive terrain feature of size four or less within range three and throw it medium range. This superpower can only be used once per turn. Size four or less. This shows, you know, she's, at, I'm fairly certain she is an Omega level mutant like Iceman and uh, Storm. And to be able to pick up a size four building and toss it range three. Uh, or sorry, tossed at medium range is impressive, and somebody's going to take that four damage to the face. And it only costs three power. I don't know if I would want to be using this too often, but it's definitely nice to have in your pocket. Matter transmutation: choose another character with an activated token within range two and push it range S or small, short, whatever. Um, a character can be moved by this. Uh, superpower only once per turn a character can only be moved by the superpower only once per turn a character not this power can only be used once per turn so if you've got enough power and you want to push if i'm reading this right and you guys let me know in the comments below if you have enough power you can start pushing other characters and it doesn't say and it just says choose another character with an activated token it doesn't say enemy or tar or ally character just says character. That could be a lot of great manipulation on either pushing your gut your your characters into position to claim an, an objective, or it could be pushing the enemy characters around to get them in range of your unactivated characters. There's a lot of cool control um, abilities there that I really like. Uh, those are those powers are not they don't require an action they just require power so boy man he put her in with um i think it's captain america like steve rogers captain america i think they reduced the cost of their super their first superpower activation by one uh, she might be good in an avengers roster just to reduce that power cost since she, I, yes, she's generating a lot of power, but anything to reduce that power cost, I think would be good. Uh, she's got a reactive power called Shield Mine. It's going to cost two power. When this character or an allied character within range four, which is huge, of it would be advanced, placed, or pushed by the effects of an enemy. I can't see that symbol. It looks like an enemy mystic attack or enemy superpower. You may use this superpower. The allied character is not advanced, placed, or pushed. Yeah, that looks like that's the symbol for Mystic. So she's kind of, basically, she's anti-control. She's a control character, and she's got anti-control abilities. And for two power, that's ridiculously cheap, especially, like I said, if you have her have some um, tactic cards or some other characters that can reduce the cost of power, even though she's going to be able to generate a lot, that's going to be very helpful. Uh, she's got two innate abilities. Uh, first up is latent psychic potential. We know that she's one of the most, one of the most powerful psychics on the planet. Uh, during the power phase, this character gains one additional power. So she's getting two power at the start of the, of every every round or every game turn during the power phase. So she's on, she's automatically going to get two, and then she's going to what is this? Uh, the psionic bolt. As long as she's hitting somebody, when you get the wild symbol, you're going to be... I mean, she's going to be generating 
more power than I think any other character out there, to be totally honest with you. She's going to be just generating a lot of power, and that's exciting. Because she's, I think she's going to end up being, even at the with a threat level of five or five points, she's going to be a must-have in any any team, really. Um, and I see a lot of people probably going to be doing some Dark Phoenix look to her, or who knows what uh, type of uh, uh, character, uh, how they're going to be painting her. Her last innate power, let me get, let me finish, wrap her up, is flight. No big surprise there. It's not that she can fly. She just has the, it's her telekinesis that allows her to, well, basically allow her to fly. She doesn't have some innate Superman ability that allows her to bend gravity and fly to the air or whatever the current thing is. But uh, she does have that fly ability, which is good. That medium movement gives her some good range. And a lot of her abilities are long range. So she's going to be able to really flitter about the battlefield and from range generate a lot of power and uh, really can kind of control the flow. I think she's going to be a must have character. I really do. And normally I'm not a big fan of Jean Grey and it's really not Jean Grey that I have an issue with. It's Scott Summers, Cyclops at the whiner, the biggest crybaby whiner, whiny whiner, Weinstein. Oh my gosh. I just, oh, just gritting on my teeth in the comics in the cartoons, in the live action. It's just, Gene, Gene, Gene. I can't even, uh, it's making me so mad right now thinking about this. I, I really hope that they will come out with her counterpart, uh, which is a clone. Uh, Sin uh, Mr. Sinister created a clone, uh, Madeline Pryor. And I'm really hoping that when the time comes, we're going to get Madeline Pryor with Havoc. They'll be in the same box. That would be awesome. And if you know what I'm talking about, why those two together would be awesome, well, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, so moving on, let's get on to some of these other characters that we're just going to do a quick speculation on. I think first up, yeah, let's talk about Moon Knight. So I've tried to do a couple of videos recently, um, but I just, you know, when you fail at something and you just know you failed at it. You know, last week I've I've got probably about six or seven videos in my uh, saved on here on the hard drive just waiting to be uploaded and it included blade and moon knight and a couple other things and i just couldn't couldn't get it out just they were just bad videos and so i'm still going to cover them because moon knight's on his way with blade and i feel like they need to be talked about so the first thing you know some people and in a way i agree not too happy with the way moon knight looks and I think I na I nailed it. Uh, it's not the model himself. I like his pose. It looks very predatory, like he's about ready to pounce on some some villains or some street thugs, that sort of thing. Uh, but I think it's the paint job. It looks very poor compared to the artwork that's out there. It is very poor, and I think. Is I'm looking at it, and I talked to another very briefly, just an exchange of, of, of messages. The character looks like whoever painted him does not, excuse me, goodness, know how to paint white. It looks very gritty, and not, not it shouldn't be gritty. Um, it should be a smooth paint, like they just didn't know how to apply white paint. And I think that's what's wrong with the character to me. I could be wrong. You guys might think otherwise, but I'm pretty sure that's that's what's sell, that's what's not selling it for me. The pose I think is good. I think he looks very intimidating, and I think that's why I like also Moon Knight I've, since the '80s. I think it was I'm trying to remember when I remember reading those comics at my grandma's house that I snuck out of my brother's room. <laughs> I think it was I want to say it was the '80s, late '80s, early '90s. And alongside the long shot comics and such. So, um, anyways, I've loved Moon Knight. He's one of my top ten characters, hands down. Maybe. Yeah, I'd say he's one of my uh, top ten characters. So, let's just do some quick speculation. I want to knock out him and Blade in the next few minutes. I think this box with him and Blade, this is, I think it's more of a collector's box than it is a... Oh my gosh, I have to have these characters in my team. We still haven't seen the the stats or even a panel to play, but they're not overwhelming characters. They're very niche characters. And I'm 
going to be curious to see how good they are. I, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, my, my hopes are, my expectations are low on these, but I'm going to get them mainly. Actually, I, I really just want Moon Knight. I'm going to get Blade just because he comes in the box. So I think he's going to have, I think Moon Knight's going to have some great uh, physical defenses, at least a four. The other ones are, um, I, I imagine his energy resistance will be probably a three. And I have a feeling because uh, if you're not familiar, Mark Spector, the Moon Knight has multiple personality disorder. I think they call it something else now instead of multiple personality disorder. I forget what it, uh, the DM, uh, the, the DSM or DM, DSM says, um, but he has multiple personalities. And I think that's going to provide him with some mental defenses. So I wouldn't be surprised if his mystic defense is a four. Uh, plus he has the blessing of Nashu or Koshu or whatever the Egyptian God of the moon is. So I think we're going to see a good mystical defense and a good physical defense and a lower or at least average energy defense. I think his health will probably be five on both sides, maybe a six on his wounded side. I could see his wounded side going up one because this guy can fight through a lot and a lot of pain and suffering and keep on going. So I could see them going, hey, let's boost up his injured side. Attack wise, I think he's going to obviously have a physical attack. I think he's going to with that with his staff. I think we're going to see at least a range two, at the very least, a basic attack that's range two. I think we'll see a range attack that's going to be a three because of his mobility, agility, his array of weapons. I think his first attack is going to be a physical attack, range three, probably five dice, zero power. And, you know, of course, I, I, I can see him also doing, amongst all of his other attacks, um, I can see him getting stagger and stun, maybe bleed because he has like these moonerangs, lunarangs. I know I'm, I'm using Batman terminology here, but he's he's thrown like little, basically little moon shaped shurikens or half moon shaped shurikens before. Um, I've I think he's used sickles, um, not sickles, scythes, not scythes. Man, why can't I think of it? He's used a variety of weapons. So I think he's going to be able to inflict maybe even the bleed effect, stagger, stun, and or stun on opponents. Um, he's going to probably have some sort of martial arts skill that's uh, somewhere around there. He doesn't have a lot of abilities. That's why I think this guy's going to be really kind of meh. Um, he's going to be very mundane. I, I would be surprised if he's a, um, above a three. If he's above a three on his threat level or his point level, I'll be really surprised. I think his biggest thing will be his uh, mental defenses or because of his mental, uh, I don't know if it's a mental disability or a psychological disability. I think we're going to see that come into play a lot more than his other special abilities. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if he also has something like if you're not in range three, of him or range two of him, you cannot target him. Kind of like what they have with Black Widow and one other character I can't think of off the top of my head. Well, let me know what you guys think that this character is going to have. I mean, I'm excited because it's Moon Knight and it's, I, I like the street level characters more than the big, most of the cosmic level characters. I think the street level are a little bit more real and uh, I think it's easier to resonate and uh, sympathize, empathize with those type of characters than the big cosmic ones. All right, let's been jump over to his partner in crime, at least for the box, and it's going to be Blade. Blade looks really good. So some people are mentioning that it looks like on the right side, upper uh, jaw or upper row of teeth, looks like he might be missing a tooth. I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping it's just a pixel thing, or maybe it didn't get painted or something. I think that I can see what they're talking about. It looks like he is missing a tooth. Now, he's another one of those street level characters. Okay, so yes, he is half vampire. Um, he's got superhuman speed, strength, uh, endurance. So I think we're going to see that come into play, but I really don't know. I mean, he's just an expert fighter. He's got lots of gadgets. He's going to have lots of probably similar gadgets to say, uh, Mark Spector, or maybe he's going to be along the same lines as Black Widow. And even though Black Widow in the comics does have some sort, some, um, superpowers, but ultimately, she's just a normal human. Also, Clint Barton, uh, the Hawkeye. I mean, these are normal street-level characters. Well, maybe not totally street-level, 
but he, it's not like he's throwing energy blast around there. So imagine he's going to have a high mobility, probably no wall crawling. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised though, uh, going back to Moon Knight that he probably will have wall crawling. I could see that happening. Uh, probably medium movement for both of these guys. I think Blade will probably have higher than average uh, health. Uh, I, I can see him doing six, probably on both sides, maybe um, seven and then a six, seven on healthy side, six on the, on the injured side, because blood loss to a vampire or even a half vampire is a little devastating. Um, instead of a normal regeneration, I could see him if he causes a point of damage or, uh, or de deals some sort of health damage he can regain up to one point per turn. Or they might just go ahead and say, you know what, let's just give him regeneration one and call it a day. I think that would be easier, but maybe even give him a superpower that says, hey, if he causes um, a bleed effect or something, that he will get a point of health only once per turn. Speaking of bleed, I can see that as one of his main um, attack abilities. This guy is definitely knows how to put the hurt on vampires which can very easily translate over to normal people and use it all sorts of deadly weapons and special abilities or special training martial arts and such like that i think he's going to be able to at least one of his basic attacks one of his first two attacks he might have three just like moon knight they might have three attacks uh very similar to how war machine has three basic attacks that w at least one of those is going to have the bleed special rule uh, Armor wise, I don't know, but I really don't know anything else, guys. I, it, I'm actually at a loss for, for these two. They are such underpowered characters. And yes, I realize that, you know, currently in the Marvel Universe, the comic book universe, Moon Knight just took down the Avengers. Uh, I think it was actually last year, took down the Avengers, stole all their powers and weapons. Um, and I know that Blade is running, was running around with the Avengers. And then after Blackest or King in Black, he is now like uh, the marshal or the in charge of uh, law enforcement in Chernobyl, which is now the vampire nation. So I, things are a little different, but this all looks like it's pre-present comic books. This is supposed to be like old school comics, not present day, since present day is kind of all over the place. So I think this is classic Blade. So not a lot of superpowers or he doesn't have... Um, the man thing attached to him or anything like that. I think it's man thing. Um, fear the touch of the man thing something like that. Uh, so I'd, I mean, obviously we don't see him there. So I'm pretty sure that this is pre um, anything else, anything recent. So he's just going to be strong. He's going to be fast. He's going to be durable and he's probably going to be ridiculously cheap. I would say at the very least, I would say a three, if he's a two, I'll be surprised. And if he's a four, I'll really be surprised. So probably three points or three threat. So we still have a lot more characters come down. So next week, we're going to be getting to see Cassandra Nova as a, a at her character card. We'll probably get the panel to play, what is today, Wednesday? So we'll probably get that Thursday, probably tomorrow. And then I think coming up after that, we're going to get obviously Blade and Moon Knight's panel to plays and their character cards. I think coming after that, though, we're probably ready for Juggernaut and or Colossus. And I wouldn't be surprised. I, I think Colossus is probably going to come with Kitty Pride. I wouldn't be surprised. I think Juggernaut will be sold separately. And then, of course, we know Miss Marvel's coming. And I'm still, unless I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, I'm still going to give the, I'm going to give the box away. I'm going to give that box as a, as a giveaway. I'll buy it, whoever she's pair, paired up with, and it's going to be a giveaway. If I'm right, well... I'm right. And I get to pat myself on the back, but I think Miss Marvel is still going to come with a large size Miss Marvel. And I think that's, uh, probably going to be in time in sync with either the Marvels, uh, the Captain Marvel two movie, the Marvels or whatever they're calling it now, or her TV show. It'll probably be sometime around then. So we might see it. I would say near the fall cross my fingers. Cause I really like that character. I know she's a bit controversial, and they keep trying to reboot her comic. And I'm like, stop rebooting her comic. Just put her in a team and go from there. At any rate, let me know what you guys think down in the description below. Uh, leave it down in the comments. Also, we hit 100 
followers here or subscribers here on Havoc Maker Studio. We're still waiting to get to 3,000 over on FMP Wargamer. So make sure you jump over there. That link is down below. Or if you're on FMP Wargamers, the link is down below for Havoc Maker Studio. Jump over. If you're here on Havoc Maker Studio, if you are one of the people that is a subscriber, I'm going to be doing a drawing. It'll probably be Friday because I am knocking out a commission right now and I've got three days to finish it. So probably Friday show, we are going to actually, you know what? Friday show, we are going to, um, on Twitch, we're going to do the, um, the giveaway and it's going to be a double giveaway. I think that's what I said. A double giveaway could be a triple, but definitely a double giveaway. And I'm going to randomly draw from all the subscribers on YouTube from the Havoc Maker Studios YouTube channel. So thank you so much for getting out there and hitting that subscribe button and getting your friends and family to do it. It's really easy. Now you get a chance to win some prizes, guys and gals. At any rate, if you have not subscribed yet, make sure you do before Friday. Just create a quick uh, YouTube account and hit subscribe. And now you're entered until Friday. All right, guys and gals. Anyways, have a wonderful day. I'm going to try to be back later on today with some other videos, some positive ones. I think that was a problem with the other videos. They were super, super negative because there's a lot of negative uh, information out there for the gaming industry. And I wanted to capitalize on it, but I felt slimy doing it. So I stopped. At any rate, I'll talk to you all later. Have a wonderful day and stay safe.